Hello everyone, I am Esther Sharon. In this video, we are going to see about the functions of risk complex. The risk acts as a three segment model. First segment is radius and ulnar disc. Second segment is proximal carpal row. Then third segment is distal carpal row. In a three segment model, when a force is applied, first and third segment moves in one direction. But second segment moves in opposite direction. When there is a movement in rest, the first and third segment moves in one direction and second segment moves in opposite direction. Thus, proximal carpal row acts as an intercalated segment. If you are applying a compressive extensor force across the wrist complex, the scaffold collapses into flexion and the distal carpal row into extension. The intercalated segment requires some types of stabilizing mechanism to normalize the motion and prevents the collapse of middle segment. The stabilizing mechanism appears to involve the scaphoid's functional and anatomical connections to the adjacent lunate and to the distal carpal row. When the corpals are axially loaded, there will be a counter rotation within the proximal row between scaphoid, lunate and trigodrum. The scaphoid tends to flex and the lunate and trigodrum tends to extend. This is prevented by two ligaments that are scaphoid lunate interosseous ligament and lunotrigodral interosseous ligament. These ligaments are pull the scaphoid, lunate and trigodrum and make them collapse in a synchronized manner. The axis of wrist joint. In wrist complex, the capitated bone acts as the axis or center point through which all the motions should be described. The capitate works as a mechanical center of the wrist. The head of the capitate referred as keystone of the wrist. Flexion and extension of wrist. During wrist flexion and extension, the scaphoid is the most movable bone. Wrist extension. Full flexion to neutral. The wrist is in full flexion. The extensor muscle gets activated. It pulls the distal carpal row and metacarpals. The distal carpal row glides in the posterior direction. When the wrist complex reaches neutral position, the ligament between the capitated and scaphoid tightens together into a close back position. Neutral to 45 degree extension. Continued extension moves combined distal carpal row and scaphoid on relatively fixed lunate and trigodrum. At 45 degree extension, the scaphoid lunate interosseous ligament brings the scaphoid and lunate into close back position. 45 degree to full extension. After 45 degree, entire proximal row moves with distal row and metacarpals. At complete extension, all the proximal row and distal row moves on the fixed radius and triangular fibrocartilage. Wrist flexion From full extension to full flexion. When flexion is initiated, the first degree is the movement of scaphoid or capitate and it reaches the neutral position. The scaphoid and lunate comes into action. At the end of full flexion, scaphoid, lunate and trigodrum moves on the fixed radius segment. Radial and ulnar deviation. The proximal carpal rows displays a unique reciprocal motion with radial and ulnar deviation. Radial deviation. Distal carpals moves along with metacarpal. Proximal carpals slides ulnarly on radius. Proximal carpals also go for flexion. Distal carpals go for extension. Magnitude of motion can vary based on the ligament laxity. Opposite motion of proximal and distal carpals happens in the ulna deviation. In full radial deviation, the radiocarpal and midcarpal joints are in close back position. The ranges of wrist complex radial and ulna deviation are increases when the wrist is in the neutral position. When wrist is extended and is in the close back position, the carpals are locked and the very little radial or ulna deviation is possible. In wrist flexion, the joints are loose packed and the bones are splayed and there is no movement. Thank you.